Hi, Chris Alden here, editor of Field Service News. Now, the Internet of Things, machine to machine diagnostics, remote communications, these are all concepts and technologies that have a huge potential to change the way Field Service operates as we know it. But will they live up to the hyperbole? Will they ever come around the corner that they always seem to be just around? Well, actually, one company that's making great strides in this area is Mac Solutions. So I caught up with their managing director, John Pritchard, to find out more. John, hi. You've just given a presentation here at the service community around the Internet of Things. Uh, perhaps to begin with, you could just give us a little bit of information on, on your background and what your viewpoint is on this huge topic. Yeah. Well, uh, I work, I'm the managing director of Mac uh, Solutions, so uh, about 10 years ago we decided that uh, we would bet on the Internet. So as a business, we were doing different things for data collection, SCADA systems at the time, and we decided that you know, we should really focus on technologies around the internet that can help UK manufacturing. So we took that decision 10 years ago, and for us, it's been really successful. I mean, since the 2007, we've been growing our business 20% per annum per annum. So that's uh, it's really a, a good business decision that we took. Um, around 2004 when we took that decision, so it's really paid off for us. Okay, so in terms of the Internet of Things, how did you approach this and implement this within your business model? Well, what we did around 2004, we found this small company in Belgium, it's called E1, and uh, they were starting to make uh, VPN routers, which is the core underlying technology to get information out of machines using the Internet. I mean, we've all got routers at home, we know what they do, a VPN router is not a lot different. It just makes you think that you're at the machine when you're somewhere else in the world on the internet. And then you can do anything you can do at the machine anywhere in the world. So we, we hooked up with this company and we've been very, very successful with that company. The company itself has been very successful. It's the worldwide leader now in VPN router technology for distributed assets. We currently have about 120,000 assets now um, on our platform which is called the talk to m cloud platform and uh, we're generating about 1 million vpn connections annually so the company is clearly number one and um, and has been very very successful we're adding to those assets now at around 25,000 assets per year so that asset base took quite a while 10 years to get to 120,000 but it's not going to take very long to get to um, 250,000 assets or a quarter of a million assets under management on that platform. And so each one of these assets is effectively giving you data that you can monitor and then dissect, take the right information out and then utilize that information. The, the real reason people can c connect to their assets is that they've, um, they, they really have done it in a cost avoidance way. It's very expensive, you build a machine, you ship it to China, you ship it to Australia, Japan, Brazil, America. To be able to look after those assets through the 12 month warranty, 24 month warranty period is very expensive. So people were using this technology in the early days as a cost avoidance technology. You know, I can sit there, look at the machine when it fails, I can look at the software that I've put in the machine, I can make software changes to that machine, I don't have to send my people there. So people were using this technology to avoid cost, but that's beginning to change now. Now they're so confident in utilizing this technology to get information back from the machine, they're realizing there's so much more they can do with that data. And, and, and now we're going through the next phase of development as a business in helping the customers really transform their business model by having this access to their assets through the internet and through this E1 platform. Okay, you talk about some of the benefits there, John, and they're, to be fair, very, very big benefits, but something that goes hand in hand with the cloud, internet of things, and all of these types of technologies, the worry is security. Are these worries founded? Well, they, 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 they are founded worries, of course, because we've all heard about them, and we've all heard stories about bank accounts being hacked into and, and all the rest of it. So. Wherever critical data exists, so there may be some people who want to get access to that data. Um, we don't use the cloud to store data. 
from the very beginning, we've decided that was a bad idea. Um, the way our technology works is a little bit like Skype. And pe most people utilize Skype, and you know you can see whether your brother-in-law in, 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 in New Zealand is online, and if he is, you can ping him, and then you can have a chat with him. Our technology works exactly that way. You can look at your platform, the talk to m Cloud platform. You can see your machines, which ones are online. You can talk to them. The data flows from the machine to you and your computer. It passes through the cloud, but it never stays in the cloud. So none of the data is in the cloud. It's just going from A to B. And of course, you know, your voice never stays in the cloud. You can't go to Skype and mm -hmm. get a re-recording of what you said. You just can't do that. You're just using it as a communication vehicle to get information from A to B. What people don't like, or a lot of the factory owners don't like, is that if we're allowed to talk to their machine inside their IT infrastructure, and we have to work very hard explaining the way our firewall technology works, that it won't create a hole in their firewall which you know bad things can happen. And we've been very successful in doing that. And of course, the more success you have in any cloud application, the more attacks you're going to get. And some of that data would be useful for competition if they could get their hands on it. For instance, we don't allow any of our uh, cloud-based servers to reside um, in China because we don't feel the security of a cloud-based service in China is sufficient. You, know, you could interrupt the data if you wanted to and copy it when it went through the cloud. But um, of course, if you use good cloud providers, the data is just passing through. They're very secure. And uh, all of our customers accept that. I mean, otherwise we wouldn't have such a huge population of assets passing data now to and fro if there wasn't a high level of trust in the security that we've built around our solution. In terms of the, the Internet of Things and, and similar, it seems that we keep talking about technology just around the corner, but actually talking to you now, this seems that this is something very real, very thriving around the, the remote diagnostics, etc that can give companies an opportunity to really up the level of service that they're offering. It's true, it is accelerating. You know, if we, if we all go back, we can all remember 2000, you know, when 2000 to 2004, Wi-Fi was just coming out, routers were coming in your home, you lost that zzz, connecting when you got onto the internet, you got on wirelessly. So the technology goes back to the beginning of the router. And, and of course, it's a ramp up, people have to, get more confidence in it. So in the early days, for sure, you know, it was a celebration every time we got an OEM to, to take a router and, and, and put it on a, on a machine and, and, and ship that machine anywhere you want in the world. But, you know, if you look at that acceleration, as I said earlier, now we're adding to that asset base at the, at the rate of 25,000 units a year. Last year we did 25,000 units. This year we'll do in excess of 30,000 units, new units on the internet. So yes, it has taken a, a, a reasonable amount of time to, um, to develop, but if you just think about your wireless internet routers at home, how prevalent they are today versus 10 years ago. So it's no different. It's, it's the same core technology with a twist for the additional security we need, for the industrial environmental standards that we need to meet, and of course the cloud-based services that we have to provide to enable the communications and the data to flow securely. So really the cloud has helped a lot, given, and, and how many people trust Skype? Do you ever feel that your conversation on Skype is being recorded by somebody? Most people would say not. But banking applications there, with data stuck in the cloud, that, that, that's what people, are, I think, are really scared of. We think, I think we've won the argument now on this issue. Okay, and one final question, uh, just to wrap up. From what you're saying, it seems that this is snowballing, um, and it, it's evolving faster and faster and faster. I mean, so, so where exactly are we going to be in three years' time? Where are we going to be in five years' time? I mean, is it a case that this approach is going to become pervasive across, across all industries? I, you know, I think just, just as I just spoke earlier in conference that um, the number of connected internet devices exceeded the number of people on the planet around 2008. Um, we sit here today with approximately three to four connected internet devices for every person on the planet. 2020 that's expected to be 
50 billion, which is six connected devices for every person on the planet. So the explosion of connected devices is not going to stop. The next phase really is what we call these megatrends. You know, we have now connected our devices, we've connected the machines. Now we're starting to get life history, birth history of the machine, how that machine is performed from day one, and we'll have three years of history in three years' time, five years of history. It allows people then to start to change their business model to what's called industrial servitization, and you can then start to change the way that you have your transactions with your customer base. You can start to charge per output of your machine versus charge for the machine and then for the services you provide. So it really is going to change fundamentally. And, and you know, the other mega trend of big data, you'll need big data analytical tools to analyze this data, to create value from this data, and which will allow you to make better choices and make better contracts with your customer going forward. And that's John Pritchard, Managing Director of Max Solutions there. And some really interesting points about the snowballing effect that we may see soon around machine to machine diagnostics, the Internet of Things, and of course, remote diagnostics. That's it for now. As always, I'm Chris Oldman, Editor of Field Service News. Thanks ever so much for tuning in, and we'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye bye.